you'd like to do these problems first, there's, there's access to them in the description below. You can find a link to a Google Doc where you can access these, these uh, documents. Here we're going to go through a couple of organic synthesis problems. Uh, the first one here, we are starting with uh, bromoethane and it's converted into ethanol. And so we want to think about what, what we're starting with, what we're ending with, what the difference is, and what, what reagents we know that we can get from one to the other. So the big difference here is we're switching out a bromine for a hydroxyl group. So we want to look at what kind of reaction do we know that's possible for that to happen, what reagents do we need. So for this, we're looking at substitution. We're looking at either an SN1 or an SN2 reaction. So in this case, we have a primary carbon, so it's going to be SN2. And we're then trying to figure out what can we add to this to form the, get rid of the bromine group and add in the hydroxide. So we need a hydroxide nucleophile. And so let's say we add sodium hydroxide or hydroxide to it. And then maybe we want to include the solvent for SN1, SN2. We want SN2 to be favored, so we want something that's polar achronic. So maybe something like dimethyl sulfoxide, something, something polar achronic. Uh, really, it wouldn't matter if you use something polar, polar achronic because this is definitely going to be SN2 either way. So, so that's what we need to do to get from here to here. Then we have a second set of chemicals that we're reacting. So we don't know what we start or end with, but we do know that B is later used to react with A to form this compound here. So what we want to do is we want to look at how A fits into this, work backwards to figure out what B is, and work backwards to eventually figure out what this unknown starting point was. So when we look at A, we have ethanol, and when we look at this molecule and we see where does ethanol fit into that, it looks like the ethanol is fitting into this component. We then want to ask ourselves, what are we ending with? So we're starting with this, we're adding something else to it, and we're ending up with an ester. We have our ester functional group here, our ester class of molecule here. So getting an ester means you mix an alcohol and a carboxylic acid. Well, we're starting with an alcohol here. That means B must be a carboxylic acid. And then if we look further, we can then take this molecule here and say, okay, well, we're starting with this chunk of it as a carboxylic acid. So we're going to take this as our starting point, where this is here. We're going to do a double bond to an oxygen, and we're going to have our, our carboxyl group. That's going to be attached to a benzene ring. And we have an NO2 group on here that you just get blocked out a little bit by the uh, up over here, but this is an NO2 and it's blocked out by the pause button there. So this is what we're starting with. We want to look at what reagents we need to mix this and the alcohol to get to react. So when you're doing a sterification, you want an acid catalyst. So we want something like H2SO4 to get the alcohol and the carboxylic acid to react. And then, now we can go back and say, okay, if, we, if we're ending at B with this, what did we start with to get that? Now we want to look at the reagents. So we have nitric acid and sulfuric acid, which is a set of reagents used to add a nitro group to a benzene ring. So what we probably started with then is this molecule without that nitro group. So we just have the carboxylic acid with the benzene ring. I'm not sure if that's benzoic acid or not. So now we've gone through and we figured out how what reagents are needed to get to A, what reagents or what we started with, and, and what B is, and, and what reagents we need to mix A and B to form this final molecule. So we filled out all of our information by looking at what we end with, what we start with, what the difference is, kind of working backwards in some instances. Let's take a look at another question. So number two, we're starting with an alkene. We're adding hydrochloric acid to it. That's going to undergo addition reaction and form compound A. And compound A has something else added to it. It forms an alcohol. And the alcohol has potassium permanganate added, reflux, and acid catalyst. It forms a new compound. So this one is a little more straightforward. We're just going to kind of look at what, what we start with and what we add to it for the most part. So for instance, in this one, the double bond here is going to form a bond with the hydrogen. That's going to form on this carbon forming a carbocation here. The chloride will then come in and form a bond here. 
So I'm gonna draw this in the same manner, even though the, the, the 3D nature of this will change a little bit. So we're gonna have this, where the hydrogen goes to this carbon and the chlorine goes to this carbon. All right, that's compound A. That then undergoes a reaction where it forms this. And we can see what's, what's changed between compound A and this is that we've changed the chlorine with, with the hydroxyl group. So again, we're seeing a substitution reaction. This time we're on a secondary carbon, so SN1 or SN2 could occur. So if they had indicated stereochemistry, we can now look at whether we want SN1 or SN2 to occur. Uh, but for otherwise, we need, we need hydroxide nucleophile. If we wanted SN1 or SN2, we could influence that with temperature and solvent. Um, but it really doesn't matter what we do for that. So again, let's just stick with some solvent. Let's, let's mix it up a little bit. Let's just go with water here. So at that point, we now have this compound. Now we're going to have uh, potassium permanganate added. That's an oxidizing agent. So this is going to oxidize, and we're again, we're at a secondary carbon. So the oxidizing agent is capable of removing hydrogen and increasing the bonding with oxygen. Currently we have one bond to an oxygen, two to carbons, and one to a hydrogen. So four bonds total for the carbon. So what we're gonna end up with, is we're gonna end up with this compound where we have a carbon bonded to a carbon, which is this one, so this one's here, bonded to another one and another one. So we have four carbons here, but instead of a hydroxyl group here, we're gonna end up with the maximum bonding to an oxygen. So especially because we're under reflux. But there's only two available spots here. So we're going to have two bonds to an oxygen that's going to form a double bond. And that would be our final compound that would go in here, butan, butanone. So again, we're going through and just picking out what reactions do we see potential for, what do we form for that. Uh, we're not really getting into any stereochemistry here, which is, which is nice, it makes it a little simpler. Um, but we're looking at what do we have at our disposal and how can we use that to get from point A to point B.